Hello and welcome to this online video lecture. This time we're going to be talking about heat and temperature, two things that you really need to understand if you're going to study thermochemistry. So the very first thing I'm going to say before I go any farther into this is that heat and temperature are not the same thing. They are not the same thing. In fact, so many students come to my class thinking that heat and temperature are the same thing that, I mean, I can't say this enough through this video lecture, heat and temperature are not the same. So how are they different? Because, I mean, obviously they're related, if that many people think that they're the same, so they have to be related somehow. And they are, because they both have to do with the motion of the particles that are making up the matter that we experience, that's all around us. So because they're both about observing, you know, the the motion of these particles and what that that you know, relates to us as human beings, you know, we think that they're related and they are, but oftentimes that tricks students into thinking that they're actually the same thing. So what are they? Well, heat is the sum of all the kinetic energy of those particles. It's the total, the sum. It's the, the total of um, all the kinetic energy of the particles of that matter. Now, at this point in your career, you should understand, in your, you know, your high school career, you should know that, you know, as things get hot, their particles actually start moving faster, and that means that they have more kinetic energy. So, if you were to add up all the kinetic energy of all the particles of a nail when it's cold, and then you add up all of the kinetic energy of the particles of a nail when it's hot, you would get a higher total in, in the nail that's hot. But... There's another situation, too, where you could have more kinetic energy. So imagine a bathtub. you got a bathtub that's about half full of water. Okay, so you add up all the kinetic energy of the particles in that bathtub. Now you turn the, the faucet on, and you add a whole bunch more water at the exact same temperature. The temperature of the water doesn't change. It doesn't feel any warmer or colder to you. But because there are more particles, you're actually adding particles of water then when you sum up all the kinetic energy of those particles, you're going to get a bigger number. And so that means that, like, you can actually have heat going up when the temperature is not changing. Usually, if, a heat, if heat changes, the temperature changes, but that's not always the case because they're not the same thing. So then what is the temperature? Temperature is the average. It's the average of the kinetic energy of the particles. Okay, so temperature isn't dependent on how much matter there is. Temperature is the average of the particles. So uh, the the if the average velocity of those particles goes up, like in the nail that I was talking about, then the temperature goes up. But if the average of those particles doesn't change, like in the bathtub, then the temperature doesn't change. If it started out at um, you know 80 degree water, then you add more 80 degree water, you still have 80 degree water. And when I say 80 degrees, that's a temperature measurement that I'm talking about, not a heat measurement. The heat of that bathtub would actually go up even though the temperature is not changing. So basically, that's the definitions of these two things, and that's kind of, you know, using my nail and bathtub example, that's kind of how they work. Um, but what, another thing that you need to know is, well, what do we measure this stuff in? I think most people are really pretty aware of temperature measurements. You know, we measure them in things like degrees Fahrenheit, uh, degrees Celsius. Probably the biggest temperature measurement, though, that, that you really should know is Kelvin. Uh, the Kelvin scale is based on absolute zero, and it's used in almost all of the kind of calculations that we do in thermochemistry. Uh, when we're doing calculations with the gas laws, we had to use Kelvin and things like that. And um, it's probably... In science, it's probably one of the most important ones with Celsius following up as a close second. The one that we don't really use in science very often, <laughs> Fahrenheit, the one that we're used to the most because it's what we tell, uh, that what we use in weather forecasts and things like that here in America. So that's temperature, those that average um, of the kinetic energy of the particles. The other uh, thing we're talking about here, heat, it's not measured in any of those units. It's actually, since it's the sum of all the kinetic energy, it's, it's an energy measurement. And so most commonly you'll see that me measured in joules. Or it's going to be measured in kilojoules, which would be a thousand joules. And that's going to be the most common unit you see heat measured in. 
So there we go. That's the difference between heat, which is a measurement of the sum of all the kinetic energy. So heat is an energy measurement. We're talking about energy there. And the temperature, which is actually a measurement of the average of the kinetic energy of the particles. So instead of directly measuring how much energy something has, it's it's kind of proportional to, to the average kinetic energy of the particles instead. And the most common unit for temperature is going to be Kelvin in science. And for heat, it's going to be things like joules or kilojoules. So that's it for this video lecture. It's short and sweet. As always, if you have any questions, please ask in class. Thanks for watching.